use this media to expose the kingdom of darkness. darkness yeah. And uh, most of the experiences I've had with these so, mo so many occult groups who so we'll bring different emojis. All right. Is this audio recording direct into the system? Uh, so we have a clear audio. All right, let's go. Are we ready? Okay. I'm already. You will be con here connect first before you let us know. How work with the future of Muslim yesterday and the coin on you? Sorry, I'll call you back. I'll see the Okota. Yeah, I'll call you. I'll call you. Okay. All right. We there? All right. Um, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, my brother. Yeah, my name is Sylvester Madu. I'm a Nollywood film actor, Nollywood filmmaker. Um, my pleasure meeting you. Pleasure is mine. All right. Okay, I, matter of fact, I have some questions I would like to ask you. I heard a lot about you. Of Christ, so we would like to. Matter of fact, we would like to meet you. We'd like to meet you. Tell us who you are. Okay. Thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Evangelist Chukwe Buka. I'm Nazir B, a general overseer of Zion Prayer Movement Outreach. All right, thank you very much, Evangelist. Um, you know, a lot of people wish to know what is your encounter with Christ. Probably your first encounter with Christ. How you started. Okay, the truth is that <laughs> I would say that uh, the Lord. My encounter with the Lord is from my childhood. I know I was born and I found myself in a sanctuary. Even before I was born, there was a prophecy that this particular child, this particular one, will serve the Lord. So even when I was in my mother's womb, the prophecy about my vocation started coming. So when I was born, uh, everybody testified, and uh, I noticed that I always see myself in the church. At the age of eight years, nine years, people normally come to my village, neighboring town. You see people coming from different parts to come and hear me speak to them. Wow. You know the Bible said that Jesus was small but full of wisdom, that even the elders were amazed listening to him. Exactly. So, I noticed that people, you see that time, some pregnant mothers will be coming to ask me, my son, what am I going to give? What is in my womb? I'll tell them, it's a baby boy, it's a baby girl. And during the time of delivery, it will be. So, I will say that the Lord arrested me when I was small. I'm not going to tell you that uh, after some years, or uh, this particular year, something like this happened before I gave my life to Christ. No. My invocation started when I was so small. I grew up in the sanctuary. In fact, that time, people were surprised. Why this small boy, why is he always in the church? Most of the misunderstandings I have with my friends then is that after the break in primary school, I would go to church and stay. <laughs> wow. And so I grew up with a lot. Wow. That's, that's very interesting. You know, just like the story of uh, Samuel in the Bible. Exactly. Samuel was born, 
mother took him to the sanctuary. That's where he grew up under the tutelage of Exactly, the because my mom was buried for 11 years. Whoa. Um, the, uh, I'm from a, a royal family. After 11 years of barrenness, she started giving birth to female children. And that was another problem. An Igbo person, if you don't have a male child, you are not 100% welcome in the family. Exactly. And so, even after that 11 years of barrenness, three girls, she was praying. And God says to her, you're going to have twins, two boys. This particular one, they will all serve you. So, when I was born, and my mom prayed, Father, even if he's one son, I will dedicate him to you. Exactly the story of Samuel. Exactly. So I grew up in the sanctuary. I started prophesying at the age of 18, even when I don't know what I'm prophesying. I started seeing vision when I was so small. Wow. So it was, let Father look at the camera from our within me in the name of state that made it so clear that the hand of God is upon this boy. Wow. And it's going very far. Wow. That time, at the age of, I go to some families, I will be the one as small as I, I was. I will be the one to point out that there is a charm here. Hmm. I will be the one to tell them, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, something like this happened in this family. Wow. So my encounter with the Lord started when I was small. This is very interesting. Really, really interesting. Okay. Talking about starting from childhood, uh, the other question I'd like to ask you is this. What other things do you do before starting this school ministry? Or did you just focus on the ministry from childhood? Yeah, even though they, they, it started from childhood, but I was into business. Okay. I have a business I was doing then, bit, my, my business name, Beautiful Rock Nigeria Limited. So I was dealing with the electrical materials, transformer. I was distributing to so many Nepal, so many companies oh. and I was doing well but even when I was into the business when I was still combining the business and the work of God you notice that so many people will be coming into the market to look for me sometimes you will see over 400 people you think they are coming to buy something they are coming to, <laughs> <laughs> they are coming to tell me to, to prophesy to them or to pray for them even in the market it doesn't matter wow so Amazing. I was doing business but it came to a stage that it's impossible to combine the two and the Lord said to me, I allow you to do this business for some reasons. The same way Peter was stopped from fishing. And Jesus said to him, I will make you a fisher of man. Correct. So that was what happened to me. And when you know it, I stopped every business and I dedicated everything 24 hours of my life to the work of God. But I think the business you're doing now is God's business. And God's business is the best business ever. And I'm happy the doing business it. of soul winning, the business of bringing people to Christ. That's the biggest business. You know, people, we, we now, when we're saying business, people will be looking at, okay, business, church is business. No, it's God's business. And God's business is the biggest business ever. What is the business? God is in the business of winning souls, changing lives, affecting people. So, that's very, very interesting. It's very, very interesting to know. Now, the next question I would like to ask you is, why did you choose the name Zion, Zion for your ministry? Okay. Before we started, I started calling Zion ministry, even though when this whole thing started, I never thought, I never had anything, I never believed it would be a ministry. People were coming to me for healing, for prayer, for prophecy. So, my, as a Catholic, I would always go to church on Sunday, morning mass, evening mass, People will be disturbing me, even in the church there, to pray for them because they are testifying of what God is doing through me. So if I go to church most time, you will see people leaving the church to rush me. If I go to chapel to pray, you will see people disturbing me. That's why I keep going from different places. So at the initial time, I never believed it was going to be a ministry. But when I noticed that the high level of crowd coming to look for me, so I have no option than to pray, Oh Lord, what name are we going to name this prayer group? So many names, I listed so many names, Divine Love, Prayer Group, and so many of them, the Lord says, it's going to be Zion. Wow. Because of Badaya 178, it is written out upon my Zion, there shall be deliverance, yes. there shall be holiness, yes. and the sons, the house of Jacob shall possess yes. that possession. Yes. So Correct. that was how the is, is an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Wow. That was such a good inspiration. Okay, speaking about Catholic. Yeah, that's my next question. Are you still 
the Roman Catholic Church or you plan to Honestly, I'm still a Catholic okay. and I don't have plan of changing from Catholic to any church tomorrow. I love Catholic church. That is truth in Catholic church. To some extent, I was born in the Catholic church. I was baptized in the Catholic church. Okay. I received communion in Catholic church and uh, I was confirmed in the Catholic church. So I've seen truth in the Catholic Church. If there is no truth, I won't be there till today. And that is why I don't have the plan of leaving Catholic Church. Even though there are so many preachers from different big Pentecostal churches to leave. You have everything it takes. You have the anointing, you have the gift of God. You are so powerful. The whole world is testifying and watching the miracles that God is doing to you. What are you still doing in the college church? So, I've had so many big offers. Some big men of God that promised me heaven and earth. If I may say, we're going to sponsor you with millions. Because through your anointing or your grace, you get everything. You get, it will be plus to our church. But, because I've seen the truth in the college church, I don't have plan of living today or tomorrow. I believe I will die as a Catholic. Okay, do you have any plans of uh, changing the ministry to church? Ministry now. I don't know if we we'll call it a church already or it's just a prayer ministry. You know, St. Paul said that I was not called to baptize. Okay. Uh, St. Paul says I was called to preach the gospel. Okay. The truth is that I normally say this all the time. When I was 12 years, I made a promise to God. There are three powerful promises I made to God. To be virgin until I marry. Wow. Amazing. Not to leave Roman Catholic Church. And not to be money minded. In fact, a priest, the priest I mentioned the name before, late father of the camera, he says, You're going to go far. They will know you everywhere. Do not have sex until marriage. Do not leave Catholic Church. When he said this, I never. I never have a ministry. Okay. When he said this, I never have a ministry. So, I never have thought of having, he says this, do not leave the Catholic Church for any reason in future, do not have sex until you marry, and do not be money minded. So I grew up with that. Yeah. And everything God has done for me today, I would say, God, I've done it through Catholic Church. The anointing, the gift you receive. I receive today that I'm using to work that people are seeing coming from different parts of the world. Started from the Catholic Church. So I don't really have any reason to change Zion to church tomorrow. I, I, I was called to be a simple servant of God. And I want to worship God and serve God with this low key. I don't believe that I have called to baptize people. I, I, I'm not called to wed people. I, I, I'm not called to officiate some things like wedding. No, no, no. My work is to propagate the message of Jesus, to preach the message of Christ, to bring healing and deliverance to his people, to perform miracles, as you are seeing today. Wow. So I, I don't have the plan of changing Zion to church. Of course, if I want to change the the church, we have everything it takes to do that. Of course. We have everything. We have a place we are staying. We have uh, the people. Uh, there is nothing, but I don't, it's not in my budget and it's not in my plan. And it's not going to happen. Okay. All right. You know, so hearing all these things that you've said, I know in life there are people who they have mentors. They have people who mentor, who they look up to. Who are we going to say? Which man of God do you look up to as your mentor? Is there anybody? And why? Why do you look up to that person? Okay, the truth about, I respect men of God so much. Both those in the Pentecostals, in Anglican, I respect them so much. In fact, I will tell you that if it's not the men of God in this country that are encouraging the people, 
No nation on earth can tolerate what the citizens of this, this country is tolerating. What we are tolerating, I don't think any country can tolerate it. So the reason why you see people are still tolerating it is because of the effort of both Pentecostal pastors, of both Anglican, Catholic. People are really, men of God are really doing well. So I love all of them. But coming down to your question about mentor, as of today, if you ask me who is your mentor, I will tell you, I really admire Reverend Father J.K. Mbaka so much. I really love him. I really followed very well what he's doing. He encouraged me a lot. Wow. And he's a man I have so much respect. Uh, I call him Elijah of this generation. Mm -hmm. No, regardless of what people say about him, you know, every, you can't understand a prophet very well. No. So, you know, in the olden days, prophets are different from pastors. Tell me any prophet in the Bible. Mention all of them that the people were not against. Is it Moses? Mm -hmm. okay. Elijah, Elisha? Every one of them. Jeremiah, Isaiah? Everyone. So I don't joke with Father Mbaka. I look up to him. I followed everything going on in that direction ministry. So if you ask me who is my mentor, I will mention him as of today. All right, there's this question here. So there are a lot of opposing opinions about uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. You know, people say she's just a vessel through which Jesus Christ came to the earth. What's your opinion on this? I can hear your voice a lot a bit. Yeah, so there are lots of uh, opposing opinions. Opposing opinions about the Blessed Virgin Mary. So what's your take on it? Because people say she's just a vessel came that through which Jesus Christ came. So what's your take? Okay, I cannot in any way... Everything about Blessed Virgin Mary is in the scripture. So if the Christian says they believe in the word of God, they should not believe one side of the word of God and ignore some. Blessed Virgin Mary, she is the mother of Jesus. You know, today I watch so many pastors on television. When they are preaching, they will tell you, uh, Virgin Mary is just a vessel. Even we should not tell her to pray for you as an example. Uh, she's just a vessel, you know. Most of men of God preaching about this. And the, to me, I don't abide with it. We're not, we, we not talking about an ordinary person here. Remember that God has so many ways to send Jesus into the world. If God wants Jesus to, Jesus can appear into the world without coming to a person. So for Jesus to, for Jesus to, for God to accept it, to use a woman for the first time to be the Teotoko, the mother of God. I don't think that kind of a woman is somebody that somebody can say is uh, just a vessel. Luke chapter 1, from verse 26 to read it down, the angel came to her, greeted her. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. The interaction, and Mary was surprised. What manner of salutation is this? That angel is greeting me, mortal. And the angel said, you shall conceive in that womb. You are going to be the mother of God. And the, the virgin said, how can this be? I know no man. I'm still a virgin. And the angel said to her, don't worry. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. And the, when you follow the scripture down, after this encounter, Mary left immediately because the angel says, don't ask me how it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Even your cousin Elizabeth that was said that she will not have a child. She's now six months pregnant. Then Mary left everything she was doing, ran straight to the house of Elizabeth. And the Bible says, immediately she greeted Elizabeth. The Bible says, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit for hearing Virgin Mary's salutation. And she said, this is wonderful. This is Elizabeth saying now, now, who told Elizabeth the counter between Mary and Angel? Elizabeth says, how happy I am that my Lord's mother come to visit me. For immediately I heard your greetings. Even the baby in my womb started jumping up. It's only the Holy Ghost that can reveal that to Elizabeth. And she said it. You know, she started calling her, my, how happy I am that my Lord's mother come to visit me. So... If anybody is starting to tell you today, Virgin Mary, even the Catholic that, say, that asked her to pray for them, they are wrong. 
I will, I don't, I will not agree with that. And I, I, I keep preaching the gospel, what I have studied. The Bible says we shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. Now, if you can check what happened in John chapter 2. Virgin Mary was invited. Jesus was invited with his disciples. The Bible says suddenly wine finished. The wine got finished. The celebrant did not ask her to pray for them. But she went to Jesus on herself. She went to the son and said, the wine has finished. She interceded on behalf of the people that were celebrating. She saved them from generational disgrace. That in the middle of celebration, wine got finished. And Jesus says, woman, don't you know that my hour for miracle has not come? But because Jesus don't know how to tell the mama no. And the, when Jesus said, woman, my hour has not come, the woman still went to the stewards. Whatever he asked you to do, do it. And Jesus performed the first miracle when his hour has not come, just because the mother interceded. Then, I don't see anything wrong if anybody should say, Blessed Virgin Mary, pray for me. Now you go to your pastor. People come to me to ask me to pray for them. Now, people go to their pastors and they even bow down and ask them to pray. Are you telling me that your, your pastor is or me? I am more superior than Blessed Virgin Mary that God have chosen. A woman that, the only woman that was faithful to the extent that God, you can, if you say that she's not the mother of God, that means you're not reading the scripture. She's the mother of God. For a woman to be favored to that extent, to be called the mother of God, she's not an ordinary woman. And even before Jesus died in John 19, Jesus says, woman, this is your son. Son, this is your mother. And even after the death of Jesus, she did not stop. She continued with the apostles. The Bible says in Acts, read it. Among the 120 of them that received the Holy Ghost that spoke in tongues, the Bible says, including the mother of Jesus. She, so she was among the 120 that received the Holy Spirit. So the world should stop preaching against her. They should accept it, that this is the mother of Jesus. And it's not bad if the Catholics or people should say, Blessed Virgin Mary, pray for me. I will go on telling you so many things about our lady. I keep saying it tomorrow. I cannot deny the fact that through her intercession, we, are, we keep moving. I invoke the same way you... Okay? All right. That's well said. Let's talk about your encounter 2012 and 2013. Yeah, I know um, the talk of town in Lagos then, that you were, you were assassins were after you. You were attacked by some assassins. And they tried to kill you. They tried to take off your life. You know, they tried to stop you. So, tell us, were you aware or do you know those who sent them after you? Matter of fact, just tell us about this encounter with assassins and who you think was after you at that point. Yeah, everything was letter men open to me. Even before they came to us, they, to carry on that dirty job. The Lord ministered to me that some group of people around you have paid people to assassinate you, to kill you. It was revealed clear to me. For that time, I asked the prayer warriors, Sister Agnes was the head of the prayer warrior. I told her at that time, the Lord told me that some people are coming to shoot me. Please, mobilize all the prayer warriors to begin to pray for me. And what was my offense? That time, we are not yet, we have not come to Zion Grand here. We are somewhere in desert. So different group of pastors are coming to there. You know, that place is very big place. Then if you come, you can put your canopy with your group. So different men of God, different ministers. And then I, I was preaching this gospel I know. You know, I tell you, I like to preach the truth. There was this day I preached that it's not good for any man of God to charge money to pray for people. The Bible says that freely you receive, freely you shall give. Then what this nonsense that when you want to go to somebody's village to pray for him as a man of God, you ask the person to bring 
200,000 or 500,000. And now the person will begin to price. Uh, why not I pay 150? When has gospel become commodity? Uh, I'm telling you, my brother. So I preach about this. And I preach about that you must not tell your followers that they must sow seed before God bless them. You must not tell them they must pay tithe before God bless them. There is nothing bad about tithing. Nothing bad about tithing. But it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be our main priority today. When we went on the stage, Malachi 310, that is the only quotation that many men of God know. You must not tell people they must pay money before you lay hand on them. You must not tell people that bottle of holy oil of 200 naira, he said it's a highly anointed one and you are going to sell it 25,000. That this thing is bringing shame and disgrace to Christianity. You, you must not be telling your followers that 500,000, I'm coming to your home. This is wrong. Aeroplane for his pastor or his priest. It's okay. But he should not charge it. He's not buying and selling. Yeah. That was my offense. So many men of God around me say that after that message that their members left them because their eyes opened. You know, the gospel we are preaching is to open people's eyes. Good news. It's a good news. So when I preach that message, so many followers of some pastors left them. So Pastor said that the only thing we can do to this guy is to get him out of the way. Because that time we'll be praying here, you'll see some of them manifesting in their group. The anointing is, is raw. I, I did not pray to get it. I was born and started. That is why you cannot encounter me with a good mind and your life remained the same. It's not possible. So, they paid some guys to finish a book of Okay. Now, when before they came, the Lord told me they are going to come. And after the prayers, the Lord says, I'm going to deliver you. Fear not. Because when you read the book of Isaiah 54, 17, it says, No weapon that passion against you shall prosper. Verses 15, it says, They shall surely gather. But if they gather the son of God, they shall scatter. Romans 8, 1. If God be for you, who can be against you? For Romans 8, 1, there is no condemnation unto those who are in Christ Jesus. First John 4, 4. Little children, fear not, you are God. For greater is he who is in you than of the world. And if you read the book of Romans 8 and 7, it says, in all this, we are more than conquerors. Yes, sir. So, now, before they came, the message came, I prayed about it, we fasted as if there is no tomorrow. I noticed we are praying, four boys were rolling on the ground. Uncontrollable rolling. I don't even know that their gun was with them in their pocket. As they were rolling, the Holy Ghost arrested them. This wow. God that we are serving is powerful. Wow. And not that after the arrest, after the program, you see them confessing. They came to meet me the next day. Fire, fire, please help me. Man of God, we came. This is the God. We came to show you. Look at the picture that the pastors gave us. It's not their picture. They gave us, do you recognize us? We are the four people that were rolling uncontrollable. We don't know what happened to us. We have been killing people. That day, you had the second assignment, and that, that desert was the best place to assassinate you. But what happened? We entered there, we could not know what happened to us, we started going on the ground. I was looking and I was sharing tests. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Honestly. And I say, who sent you to come and kill me? They say, it's pastors that you preach that it's not good for them to be charging money, and that was the offense. Wow. There was a priest, a Catholic priest, then in, in a relay, which I called. I have to pray for them. I have forgiven you, but stop killing people. Stop doing this kind of business. If they have given you money, go and return it back to them. So most of those pastors that send them, one letter came. I don't want to mention his name because, you know, we're online. One of them came and confessed that since that time he has not had peace. After that, more than another attack again. So it has not been easy. But I, I come to know that one with God is majority. You know, you know, the best thing to hold very well is God. When you are really connected to God, there is no need to fear anything. You don't need to be afraid. And that is why I cannot sleep every day without examining myself. That if, if there is anything I'm afraid of, it's God. 
I don't just want to offend God because I have no native dog. I don't belong to any group. Only what I know is my Bible and my God. And he has been saving me, delivering me. There are so many challenges. 2017, everybody will know. My name was everywhere. In life. I don't want to go to that side now. But God has delivered me. So that is my experience about it, as I said. Not once, not twice. Wow. It's well. The Bible says the Lord protects his own. Okay. Okay, let's talk about this um, seraphic water. There's a lot of testimonies recorded about this water. We would love to know a lot of testimonies recorded about the seraphic water. So we would love to know how does this happen? Yeah. The Bible says I will bless the work of your hand. It was through the direction of the Holy Spirit that when the Lord ordered us to do that. And before the company started, we ministered on the whole thing going on there. And we decreed, because the Bible says you shall decree a word and it shall be established. We decree that anybody that come in contact with water must testify. And today, people with cancer are giving testimony. People that have not seen their period. In fact, there is this our day, she program 40 days we just did. So there is a lady that has not seen her period for over 10 years. She started flowing after drinking it. From the ground, she started testifying that it's coming out. So, so many uncommon miracles are flowing through seraphic water. Because we decree and we prophesy on it. That if you have encounter with it, your life will not remain the same. Because before, prophets walk in different things. Naaman was healed by pool of Bethsaida, um, pool, uh, River Jordan. He said, Elisha told him, go and dip yourself seven times in the, in the river Jordan. And he did and was healed. Handkerchief of Paul healed the sick. Yeah. Shadow of Peter healed the sick. Jesus split on the ground and touched, Jesus and touched anointed somebody's eyes and said, go and wash yourself. And so we pray for seraphic water and uh, many, many are doing way bill of it, even to abroad. And they are testifying. So it's just beyond the product. It's, it's just, just beyond, beyond the product. The it's not ordinary water. The consciousness that one needs to have. Okay, yeah, this same seraphic water. How did you come about it? Because we are, right now we are on live, right? So, um, because we are recording this article right now. So, how did you come about the seraphic water? Everything about. It belongs to you, right? Yeah, the name. I love the name so much because of uh, uh, seraphic simply means angelic. So yeah. we have not just seraphic water. This studio we are now is a seraphic studio. Angelic studio. Angelic studio. And um, we have also the oil we are praying with people is seraphic oil. And I have seraphic foundation, seraphic homes foundation, wow. the platform we are using to help the widows and orphans. I don't really want to go to this side. Fully NGO, because right? in an NGO, because many people use use it to defraud people. They use my picture and they tell them people, for Rebuka is demanding money for one thing or the other, which is not me. You know, we're living in a world of social media where people use people's face to make money. Somebody like me, if we're on Facebook Live now, I may use this opportunity to tell them, let them know. Sylvester Madu will never ask you to give him money to come for audition or to put you in a film. Don't do that. So let them hear me. Sylvester Maru does not do that. I don't ask people for money to come for audition. They use my name. If you go on Facebook now, you see over 20 accounts of Sylvester Maru. Some people don't even know which one is my real account. I stopped entering Facebook because they take a lot of a lot of things. There. So people use different ministries, different products to fake people and collect money. 419 is on the high rising, you know, but. What do we do as Christians? We just have so to hope you are hearing now. <laughs> that Brother Ebuka does not solidate phone online. Yeah. Anybody chatting you online, telling you one account, mm -hmm. it's not me. Exactly. And you have hear him now. You need to tell them. Please, all of you should be very careful. All these bad boys everywhere that have Ibo in their hand <laughs> will, not <be> <laughs> <laughs> that will not be collecting your money in the name of ministers or public figures. God That's bless true. you. That's true. Because it's so painful. I had an encounter with one lady. She came, she came to the set where I was filming. 
you know. Sorry to, for me to digress. Yeah. To a set where I was filming. It was later she came to tell me. She sat down. She was calling a number. The phone was ringing, but I was not picking. Child. She was calling the number. The phone was ringing, but I was not picking. So later now, she, she, she called somebody on that production set. I said, please, tell him to pick his phone, that his phone is ringing. Then my PA came and met me. I said, ah, your phone is ringing. I said, my phone is not ringing, no. She said, ah, your phone has been ringing, that you have up to, up, up to 12 missed calls. I said, 12 minutes. I said, take, open it now. Said, There's no missed call. My phone has not been ringing. So now she came out. She said, okay, that she's been calling me since. I said, calling me? Who gave you my number? She said, no, she saw my number on Facebook. Then she said she saw my number on Facebook. I laughed. I said, Facebook? I said, it's not my number. She dialed the number. She called it. The number was ringing. But nobody was picking. Then I said, who, who, how did you? She said, eh, that I came to, I told her to send her thing, to send, to send me 25,000 naira. Try. So that I said, me. I said, my name is Sylvester Mabi. She said, yes, now, is it not my account? She, I said, open the account. She opened the account on Facebook. I said, this is not, this is not. She said, this is my picture. I said, but this is not my Facebook account. I said, there are, I said okay, open. There are several Facebook accounts there. Is this you? I said, okay, the number, the account number that you paid the money, is it my account number? Is this Sylvester Mabi? She said, no. I said, okay, so it's not me. There are so many people who have been faking, they've been duping people. Even my colleague, other colleague, Mike is away. Somebody called me one time from the U.S. Say, ah, that the daughter paid twenty-five thousand dollars into Mike Ezuwe. I said, I said, it's not Mike Ezuwe. It's not him. I said, Mike wants to sell his film. I said, it's a lie. It's not him. I said, have you chat with the person on Face, as in WhatsApp, video call? Video call. He said no. I said, okay, call him on video call. Say so that you'll be seeing him on face to face to know that he's the one. I said, these people they devise every means. To Everything. Do. So I'm not surprised that you said some people will be using your name now to cross uh, somebody. Say, but if you go to Facebook now and type Zion Ebuka, you will see so many accounts. And I don't so they should be careful. That's what I need you to tell them again so that they know. <laughs> they should be careful. So please be careful. Oh, yeah. stop giving money to these people. Uh, uh, seriously. Eh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so we've talked about the NGO, we've talked about ceramic, uh, seraphic uh, waters, seraphic homes and foundation. What motivated you to start this? Yes, because I love helping people a lot. 2009, I was praying in Enugu, in a home monastery in Enugu. The Lord told me, you will have something like this to be helping people. Don't joke with taking care of the princess. less privilege. Then when I return back, I establish a group called Welfare. So that group goes to both prisons and everywhere. Wow. So as time goes on, I have to change it to this Seraphic after long prayers. I really love that name, Seraphic. It's unique. That is what we're using. For every, almost everything about me is Seraphic. No, I was looking at the seraphic. I didn't even know it was water until I just stylishly saw seraphic. It's when you drink it, you <laughs> will encounter the power, power. in it. Right. Uh, okay, now we've talked about the ministry. We've talked about um, your work in the ministry, what you do. We've talked about your history. So let's go a little bit private. And I hope you don't mind. No problem. Aside from the gospel, what else do you do? Aside from preaching the gospel, what else? What else do you do? The only thing I do, 24 hours, I like the that. work of God, healing. Every day is occupied. If I'm not minister in Zion, every way, fact, from now until the next two years, my timetable is filled up. I don't even have chance. Talk less of adding another thing to the work of God. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, the next question is this. As a young man, a handsome young man, mm. You know, mm. uh, I know you're in the ministry, you have people around you, you have both La sisters. Rather your voice a bit. Sisters, you know, you have sisters. Mm. What plans do you have? This one need to drink one cup of water. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but I, I want to keep it because um. Preparing for program in Amoka. Okay. Um, marriage is good. 
is ordained from God. Yes. So there is nothing bad about marriage. But it's a powerful vocation. But it's the first vocation. God connecting Adam and Eve and says, go and multiply and fill the earth. Yes. So it's a very good thing. Honestly, before, I never have the thought of getting married. I don't have it in my mind before. In fact, before I wanted to live a single life and go and die. Honestly, this was my mindset before. Though when I was small, I wanted to be a priest, a Catholic priest, but as time goes on, it didn't work out. Then, so as time goes on, I never have any mind of getting married. But after two years back, two years ago, when I met my mentor, Adam Baka, and I told him that time, but Daddy is like, a, I want to remain single. I am so occupied with the word of God. Can I be able to cope with a woman? Because sometimes one of my friend minister was telling me that sometimes he would dress and put tie. Before he go out, his wife would begin to lose that tie. So, being a man like me, that a lot of people are coming every day to tell marital wahala, a lot of things in marriage. So I was not really motivated about getting married. But father advised me. He says, no, Ebuka, you are going to marry. So when he said this, I think two years ago, was when the idea and um, zeal, I don't know if I can use the word of zeal or desire, de desire to get married entered me after his word to me. Before, I was not thinking about getting married. Because I grew up without having any girlfriend. You know, I told you I was 12 years. When I was advised, do not have sex until marriage. So that kept me, really pushed me away. I don't even want to communicate with any female. So, but when my spiritual father advised me, now what I'm doing is I'm praying seriously. God, show me the one so that I will go and rest. <laughs> okay, so uh, now the, that the desire has come, I would say, has there been anyone shown to you or is there anyone in line already? Uh, as of today, no one. Okay. But I'm praying seriously that maybe before that first night, I will know one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, seeing how busy a man you are, what's your relationship with your family? How do you cope with family issues, parents, brothers? You know? I love my family so much. Um, I try to balance things right now, even though before, some of them are complaining. But I try to balance it, know that family is, is so important. Yeah. You know, women of God, most time, we pay attention here and there, and that is why so many things are lacking in our homes. So, I'm in good time with my father, my mom, my siblings, my twin brother, all of them. So we communicate with them, and I have time for them. Too. That's fantastic. Okay, if the Lord tarries, that's if Jesus Christ, if the rapture hasn't taken place, where do you see Zion ministry, prayer ministry? Where do you see it in the next 10, 20 years? Uh, the way we are moving by the special grace, we will be everywhere in the world. My desire, my focus is to take the gospel everywhere to the ends of the earth. That is my desire. Right now, we have so many plans next year, taking it around Lagos, around some other, though I've been traveling to some country preaching the gospel. But I know very soon we have a plan of taking Zion everywhere. Zion will be close to people in America, will be in America, London, Europe, Asia, Arab, everywhere. So that is my desire. And by God's grace, it's going to happen. Amen. Amen. And uh, also, do you have a vision of the Zion ministry? you know, having layouts somewhere else, maybe like layouts somewhere, like properties or so? Ah. Maybe apart from this very place where we are now, do you have a vision, another layout? 
Yes. I think it's a similar thing we have answered bef uh, said before. Okay. Like right now, we are in Anambra State, Amoka. We have a land there. Okay. And that is where we're going to host a program on 31st night and first, two days program. Oh, okay. So right now, we have moved to Amoka in our own land we bought there. And from there, we'll be reaching to other states and other countries. I understand also that you sing. Yeah. So how, how is it going for you? Very, very well. Gospel as a gospel music artist. <laughs> I love singing so much, you know. Most of the time, if I want to hear from the Lord, I'll begin to sing. Tears will begin to come out of my eyes. When the Lord will begin to speak to me. Wow. So I love singing and I have some, I have released uh, four albums and they, I think fifth one is on the way. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So like people, people actually didn't even know that, uh, they hear a lot about King David, King David, but they didn't know that King David is a musician. Powerful one, no? Very, uh, uh, Not very just very ordinary musician, very powerful. Powerful one. musician. Yeah. And a very good dancer. Hmm. Yes, King David is a, was a very good dancer. Very, very well. Yeah, he danced to the point where the wife was saying, uh, uh, are you not ashamed? And that was what brought cause upon that woman. And God says, because of this, you are not going to have a child. And, and the, I think she was the only woman that died buried in the Bible. Yeah. So singing and praises Praising. can, it's the only thing you can give to God. That's it. Well, are you going to give God your prayers? That's all. And that is why Psalm 150, if you read verses 4, Psalm 149, verse 3, 4, David will always tell you, sing and dance unto the Lord. So I don't joke with the dance. The only problem is I don't know how to dance. I don't have this dancing skill. Any style is still, so as long as you're shaking your body <laughs> for the Lord. Okay, now I've come to the one that really I would like to talk much about that concerns my, my industry, which is Nollywood, Nollywood industry. During the lockdown, there was this rumor about you shooting a film titled Family Crisis with some Nollywood stars. And uh, that happened to be your first movie. It okay. happened to be your first movie. So what was your experience like? Very good, because honestly, why I want to go into movies small, not really very full time, but just to continue to pass some message but we get the message of Jesus Christ to enemies. Like that one is family crisis. And uh, we believe other ones are coming out. Now, there are two things I really want to. You know, you know now as the ministers, and I was happy when I heard you are a pastor. Because mm. everybody knows you as a very mean person in the <laughs> movie. You know, that particular movie of yours that it says, I am not Igwe. If you want me to be Igwe, I am Igwe. So, so, so I really love us to change things together because one, I want to come to Igbo tradition and also what is going on in Nollywood today. One, I, I will say it that the way they, what they normally show the world about Igbo tradition, Igbo, how somebody killed this one, how they do this, they watch somebody's body, come on, they, you know, outside world. They will be thinking that these people, these ways, their culture is very bad. But most of those things is not really happening now. Yeah. And so they are painting our, some of them are painting our culture black. Negatively. Negatively. So we have to be changing that. Secondly, not only would now, everything people are act acting there, most of them, as, what are they learning from there? Kissing, romancing, that is all. Sex. So we can, so far, you know, this, the Bible said that the devil is the prince of the air. Now, what I want in industry, what I want to, my, what I want to play, my role is to use that medium also to change some narratives. Preach the gospel. They preach the gospel. Especially one, to tell people through that, my experiences with all court kingdoms. Because so many occult groups are coming to meet me. For prayers, repentance, deliverance. So wow. many of them. Wow. But there was one of them that came from Alaba International. Wow. His stomach was like as if she, he's pregnant. He says, spiritually, I've been killing people. From Alaba International. I've been killing people. And the, the funniest thing he said that, we know you, Ebuka, we know you in our kingdom as one of the ministers that trouble our kingdom. And he asked them to bring him to see me. He says, I know I will die, but I just want to see you. Pray for me. 
They concern me with God. And I told him he will not die. He confessed to me how he killed the only sister. And so many of them. So he says even the men of God, some men of God are their member. And that's why he said they should bring him to me because he, he knows the minister that troubling him. Troubling their kingdoms. So what I want in industry is to propagate the message of Jesus. To use that media also to reveal how occult world, how they are operating, how they are manipulating the destiny of the people of God. How they are using little porridge yam and taking the destinies of people. You know, Esau ate just porridge yam. And that, was, and that was what ended him. Today, what we are hearing is the God of Abraham, God of Isaac and Jacob. Jacob. Should I, Jacob it, is the second son. son. It should I be God of Abraham, Isaac and Esau. Esau. You know, when he ate that porridge yam, something changed in the spirit realm. So the same thing, many occult people are giving so many people gifts and collecting their destiny. So my main thing in, in industry is to we, we, we work together to propagate the message of Jesus, to let people know how the occult world, how they are operating. As a deliverance minister, I, am, I understand this very well. And wow. also to tell people about some of my experiences. This has been amazing, you know. You've answered it all, actually, because I was going to ask you again, any plans to see you in new movies or any plans for any upcoming movie? Yes, of course. So one is coming next year, but I don't want to reveal the, the title, the name right now. Okay. It's going to come next, and I believe you are going to be part of it. Ah, amen, amen. <laughs> Amen. I can't wait. I can't wait. Seriously. You know you're a very busy man too, but you know. Yeah. You're gonna be. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Evangelist. Thank you very much. Um, God has uh, really used you immensely to bless lives, to change people, to affect destiny. And I'm really glad to meet you, and I'm glad to be privileged to ask you this question. And I'm very happy. Interesting. It's been an interesting interview with you. I learned so much from you. So far. Thank you very much. And the, I, I just have one question for you. Okay. Just one question. In the movie, you, you always ask either you are with God or you are with the, either you are with God or you are with the, what is happening here? Okay. Follow up the... So now, you always ask, either you are with a gun, or where you are killing people, you know, this action, action of a people. Now, how do you cope physically? The people are afraid of you when they encounter you on the real person, not on the movie. Well, you know, the truth is, over the years, I have learned to... I have learned to know, or rather, I have come to understand that I, I have two lives, or should I say, I have three lives. I have three lives. These three lives that I have, one is my spiritual life, life of God that is in me. Two is my physical life, the physical life that I live here on this. And the third life is the movie life. Life I live in movies. Okay. The life I live in movies is not the real me. The life I live in movies is the life of my career, life of my job. But my real life is in the house of God. My real personality is a child of God, is a Christian. What you see me do in movies ends in movies. Smoking a film. Not real alcohol, though. I smoke real cigarettes in a film. It ends in a film. I carry gun in a film. It ends in. Once we hear action, I enter that character. I do whatever the director wants me to do. Once you hear cuts, I'm out of that character. It's the real me. My real life is in the house of God. Those who have interacted with me, those who have been with me, when they meet me, they say, ah. ah you're so different. Ah, it's, it's what I see in film is not who I see. In real life, I don't drink. I don't smoke. Oh, that is wonderful. So, but for film, you're just like a banker counting money. 
The money is not his own. You understand? He has a lot of money around him, but that's not his money. So he's doing his job. So for me as an actor, I just do my job as an actor. I try to interpret the character. That's why it's called make-believe. I make you believe I am bad, I am terrible, so that when you're watching it, you are afraid. <laughs> but when you come to me physically, one-on-one, -on -one, in real life, it's a different personality. So that's what a lot of people should learn, especially when you're in the entertainment industry. Your real life is different from your physical life. You know, your real life, rather, is different from your movie life. A lot of people should learn to separate it. Some people don't know how to separate it. What they do in movies is what you see them do in real life. People don't know. But you see, for me, I have learned over the years to separate my film life from my real life. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Honestly, 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 my brother, I'm happy for you coming here all the way from enugu to this place thank you very much thank you so